of blood in a perioperative setting. It contains a range of recommendations, including healthcare settings establishing their own perioperative patient blood management program. And to discuss this further, I'd like to introduce Darrell T. He's an orthopaedic surgeon and the co-head of orthopaedic surgery at the Royal Adelaide Hospital. Please welcome Mr. T.
and decrease length of hospital stay. So the timing of elective surgery should optimise the patient's ability to build up their preoperative iron stores and the haemoglobin. Obviously, if a surgeon expects a surgical blood loss of 30 to 40 grams per litre, then building up a high haemoglobin level preoperatively will diminish the demand for postoperative transfusion. The flowchart template of appendix that you have in your folders there, it's on page 16 in the, in the little clinical lab guide, quick reference one, helps us with a stage rationale to identify any patients at risk and to implement a treatment program to correct the situation prior to elective surgical and anaesthetic challenge. It may in fact identify other clinical problems that urgently need rectifying prior to proceeding with elective surgery. We might end up making an en route diagnosis of cancer of the colon. We note throughout the uh, template it's frequent direction to seek advice from a haematologist, a gastroenterologist and other clinicians. This is a team game. So, well before surgery we can initiate iron therapy, which needs vitamin C to initiate the FE triple plus to FE double plus for better absorption. And remember that milk blocks iron absorption. Lots of patients have no idea about this and we do have to educate the doctors to educate the patients. IV iron may be indicated in some cases, and we have got some brilliant uh, people here in Australia and here with us today who can help us with that. Ferritin is protein bound iron, and so when we're looking at it and we see low levels, it infers uh, iron deficiency. So, what can we do during the procedure that's going to help? Sometimes the operating theatre can look like this just after the initial heated discussion between the surgeon and the anaesthetist. <laughs> More commonly, it spells a story of major blood loss and all the attendant risks to the patient. What can we do to minimise perioperative blood loss? Surgically anticipated blood loss should trigger immediate mechanisms to minimise blood wastage and maximise blood salvage at the time of surgery. Preventing hypothermia will reduce operative blood loss and the incidence and volume of blood transfusion. Deliberate anaesthetic induced hypertension to levels of mean arterial pressure of 50 to 60 millimetres of mercury can reduce blood loss and the incidence and volume of blood transfusion. In this respect, spinal anaesthesia becomes a positive help. In my past, primitively in war surgery, in the past, I have collected bulk blood from a clean body cavity and immediately reinfused it through filters back into the patient. Today, thankfully, we have more sophisticated options. The Sangvia device, that some of us will be familiar with, is a selective uh, suction of blood out of the operative field site, directly returned to a storage bag where it's filtered en route before being reinfused immediately in the patient. In more elective circumstances with larger volume anticipated blood loss, an automated cell saver with dedicated standby staff can reinfuse, wash, filtered and concentrated the resuspended salvaged blood to return to the patient. Good appreciation of surgical anatomy protects damage to major blood vessels. Minimally invasive approaches can reduce blood loss and morbidity to a fraction of that seen in open surgery. Removing blood from the operative field by returning it to the body, core blood volume with an S-mark bandage prior to the application of a tourniquet in limb surgery prevents blood loss. At the end of the procedure, operative site infiltration with something like narapin, rapivacaine, mediates vasoconstriction locally in the wound. At wrap-up, pressure limb bandages over the wound and elimination of drains can conserve uh, blood altogether. It is 
useful to have cutting diathermy, coagulating diathermy, and uh, the delight of argon beam uh, diathermy. All of these techniques maintain a better surgical field vision and minimize blood loss. We've heard talk of tranexamic acid, and we do have a recommendation for this in hip and knee arthroplasty and cardiac surgery. I use tranexamic acid in open hip surgery with good perioperative and postoperative effect, dispensing with the use of postoperative drains to release free blood from closed and wound tissue spaces. So what about after surgery? If you use surgical drains, then this collected sterile filtered blood can be reinfused within four hours using a system like the Bellavac or Constavac blood drainage collection systems. But be careful if you've already infiltrated the wound, perhaps with local anaesthetics and other agents. Post-operative transfusion, well, the revised hemoglobin trigger levels have reduced the practice of top-up transfusions. It's no longer seen as a tonic for the patient to have a couple of units of blood on their way out of hospital. In the healthy patient, HBs of 70 to 100 grams may well be tolerated, as witnessed in some of our Jehovah's Witness patients in the past. In post-op patients with myocardial or cerebral ischemia, with haemoglobins between 70 and 100 grams per litre, a single unit transfusion with post-transfusion reassessment is appropriate. Remember that high haemoglobin numbers do not always equate with immediate improvement in oxygen delivery to the tissues. Supplementary oxygen by mask may be sufficient. So it is our responsibility to establish these principles, these three pillars of wisdom with respect to patient blood management in the perioperative period, and we will be doing our patient a favour. Remember, the bottle of bread you enjoy at the end of a busy operating day may be more beneficial than the bags of red cells given to a blood-deprived patient. Don't waste any red cells. Replacing them is not always free of trouble. Thank you.